If you are still relying on highlighting and rereading, you need to stop now. Hi, I'm Miss Angler, a biology teacher and a learning expert. And in today's video, I want to take you through the only three science-backed study techniques that are going to improve your approach to learning and remembering more content in less time. Today, you're going to discover the only three proven methods that are backed by research to improve your memory retention and improving your results. These aren't hacks. They are neurological training methods to get you prepared for your upcoming exams. So let's dive in. Now, you're probably wondering what on earth makes a study technique science backed? Well, it needs to fulfill three important neurological roles when you are progressing through the learning itself. Number one, one, it needs to activate your active recall. No matter what technique you are using, you need to be actively recalling information that you've just learned. Active recall is when you actively force your brain to retrieve information. Now, students who do this experience a 50 to 80% increase on their results just by simply recalling basic facts and information. A really important step in active recall is spending time after you have reviewed material, which is remember, not just reading and highlighting, this might also be making mind maps and notes and flashcards. And now you need to actively recall, which means you are not going to look at your notes and you're either going to re-explain something to somebody else. Maybe you're just going to talk to the wall and recall everything that you remember. If you're using flashcards, that's also a form of active recall, but you need to be very careful that you are not doing the cards in order. In other words, you'll you know, preempt the next card that's coming. You need to shuffle them up and always make them different so that you don't know which one is coming up next. Let's talk a little bit about how the hippocampus works. It's a region of your brain where you're gonna put information. The thing is, it's more like a hard drive and it needs time to download information into it. The best way to do that is not by reading and not by highlighting. Instead, what you are doing is you want to place that memory deeper into the brain. So what you're doing when you actively recall is you're actively training and almost forcing the brain to remember something because it must retrieve it from your memory regularly. Now, this is obviously short-term memory. For a lot of pieces of work, we also want it to become a more of a medium to long-term memory, especially when it comes to exams. You want to be able to retrieve that information quickly. And so the hippocampus allows us to do that but in order to do that, you are going to have to do active recall. Technique number two, spaced repetition. Now I have gone on and on about this on all my other channels and my socials. I have viral videos of how to create the perfect spaced repetition timetable. It's called the 2357 revision method. And essentially it works off of the science based off of Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. Now, essentially what happens is the first time you learn something, you're gonna know like 100% of it. You're in the class, you remember everything the teacher is saying. And then you step outside and by 24 hours later, even 48 hours later, if you haven't gone over that information, it's gone. It's at about 50 to 30% retention. And by day seven, let's say you haven't gone over any of that new work, all of your memory is wiped clean. There isn't anything that is remaining in that short-term memory bank. To overcome this, we need spaced repetition. So let me explain how the 2357 revision method works. And if you want me to make a specific video just on this, like how to actually set up your exam timetable using this technique, let me know in the comments down below. So essentially what you need to do is get yourself a calendar, probably two months calendars worth. So you need the month that your exams are in and the month before. And you are gonna fill in the calendar with all the dates of your exams. Now, working backwards, you are going to use the 2357 revision method. So let's say, for example, your exam is on a Friday. On Friday, you're going to do a past paper question the day before. That's very standard. We're always doing that kind of thing the night before our exam, right? Now, this is the important part. If your exam is on the Friday and you want to do space repetition, 
the day before you're doing your past paper question. You're going to count two days before that. That means we're on Tuesday now. Tuesday is going to be a revision day. You are then going to count three days beyond that and make a revision, five days beyond that, and then seven days beyond that. Now you can actually continue doing this whole process and maybe go up to nine and 11 days, just depending on how many um, weeks in advance you know your timetable. But this is the best way because if you think about it, remember we worked backwards, you are gonna start seven days, five, three, two, and then the night before. And that's the perfect way to space everything out so that you never forget everything. You're constantly topping up your memory and bringing it back up again every time. Technique number three is called interleaving. Now, many of you are probably already doing this, but you don't realize how important it is to do all the time. Interleaving is when you are doing one subject for a set amount of time, and then you change change to another subject. I know so many of us want to do maths all day when they're building up to the exam and then they want to do biology the whole of the next day. But what you have got to remember is you are training your brain. You are training your brain to run a marathon and to be able to jump between different topics actually creates stronger neural pathways so that you can remember more information more effectively. So what does this mean for you when you are studying? On a specific day, once you have spaced out your repetition, as we just spoke about now, you will find that there will be days where subjects overlap in the day. In other words, you'll have to cover maths and English and maybe biology. And so what you need to do is interleave them. The best way to do this is with time blocking, where you block out a certain amount of time for studying in the day, and then let's say you have five hours of study time that you are allocating. We're gonna keep one hour for solid rest in the middle, so now we've got four left over, and each one of these hours should be dedicated to a different subject. Why does this work so well? Well, when you are studying and you're engaging in one subject, let's say we're studying mathematics, the brain is actively recalling we're working on the topic. Now we force ourselves to stop at the hour mark, one, because we do need to have a break for our brain, but two, when you start studying the other subject, and it must be a very different subject, like let's say we're gonna go into biology now, into the next hour, that's gonna cause your brain to be under a little bit of strain. Now I know that that's not what you want to feel, but you know that feeling of like strain on the brain to recall information? That's actually the brain working and remembering things and storing it away in the memory that we need for our exams. So every time you feel that sensation of, I can feel that memory, it's like just there, but I can't reach it. That means it's working. We are on the right route. Now, you're going to study then that biology for the next hour, and then you can swap either back to mathematics or you can do something else. And now you can return to mathematics in the fourth hour. And what you are training your brain to do now is to retrieve all that information that you did hours before, which is a good thing. And what it'll do is it'll strengthen the neural pathways in your brain so that it's easier the next time to retrieve the information. So in short, everyone, studying is supposed to feel a certain way. If it feels too easy and the knowledge is just feeling like it's there, you probably haven't studied it hard enough and that you need to not trust your brain when it's like, oh, this is easy. I can do this over and over again. No, that's a bad sign. We need a little bit of strain, a little bit of resistance when we're studying because that means the brain is trying to make this a more long-term solidified memory. Now, how are we going to put all of these three things together? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to, one, make sure that we are actively recalling by using past papers, quizzes, flashcards, mind mapping, blurting, any kind of recall technique. Step two, we are going to use those techniques over spaced repetition days, meaning that we're going to make sure that we don't leave a subject unstudied for more than three days. We need to return to it. Even if it's only for 30 minutes, return back to a subject that you have done three days prior. 
And the third and final step is you need to interleave. Remember, we are not going to do the same subject every hour of the day. We want to change the subjects. We want to do biology in one hour and then maths in the other. And this creates the perfect brain workout. You have to work the brain harder if you wanted to perform during your exams. Now, all of my students that have tried this technique have reported a massive increase in their results. I'm talking students who are getting 30 and 40% are now getting between 70 and 90% just with these small changes. And so I challenge you in these upcoming exam seasons to try this out. Give yourself at least four weeks leading up into your exam time to prepare adequately and you will see a massive difference. And what you'll also find is that you'll actually spend less time studying near the end, like closer to the actual exam, because you're so confident when you're about halfway through, you've covered so much and you're remembering everything so well that you will actually start to study less because you remember more. So don't forget to act this exam season. A is for active recall, C is for cyclical spaced repetition, and T is for topic interleaving. I'm Miss Angler, your favorite biology teacher. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and give me some comments about topics you'd like me to cover or anything we covered in this particular video, which you would like a dedicated video to, and I might make a video answering you. But I will see you all again soon. Bye.